Okay, here we are with data analysis for graphs part two. And so what we want in this lesson is to really go over um, practice using Microsoft Excel to complete um, two questions. One question we're going to work fully for you. Yep, One together. question <clears throat> we're going to leave it for you to finish off yourself. And then you bring it to class. And then you'll bring it to class and then we'll go over it in class tomorrow. So answer all the parts, print your answers on this um, this lesson will give you some practice working um, in Excel. So here we go. Um, here is the first example. It's a science project. Students tested how long heavy-duty batteries would power an MP3 player. So we tested 16 different sample batteries. We recorded the running time of the MP3 player in hours. And here's the running time. So we get 29, 26, 23, 22, and so on and so forth. And you can see all the data is here. What we need to do is we need to determine a range. We need to determine reasonable interval size. But remember, we're doing all of this using Excel. So before we go any further, what we want to do is we want to call up our Excel um, window here. And so what we've got is we've got the battery life for our 16 different samples. And so that's listed down in this column right here, in, in the A column. We've got some headings up here, battery life, which will be the interval, the midpoint, the frequency, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency. No problem. But we need to do the range first. So down here, Miss Hughes, how yes. are we going to do range? Well, we want to find the maximum value minus the minimum value, and Excel can do that for us pretty easily. We want it to perform a calculation. So we are going to start by pressing equals, and it's pretty straightforward. We just type max. Open the bracket, select the data that, that you want Excel to go and look at to find out where is the highest value in that. Close the bracket, hit enter. It says the maximum value is 29. We can do the same thing for the minimum, equals min, open the bracket, select the data, close the bracket, hit enter. Minimum is 17. So we want to find the range. We can just hit equals and then click on cell B19, that's our max, minus, click on cell B20, that's our min, hit enter, okay? Now there's, oh. a, there's another way to do this. If you just want to find the range straight away without <coughs> finding the max or the min, then maybe Mr. Jackson can just type this in. You could type equals, max, select the data. Mm -hmm. minus, minus, min, select the data. Or if you're sick of selecting data like Mr. Jackson is, you just type in A2 to A17. Use a colon, not a semicolon. Hit enter. It'll still give you 12. Okay. okay. Now, because we're setting up a frequency table and we want to create intervals, we like to know the minimum value because that's going to be what yeah. we use to find the left endpoint of our lowest interval. And then we're going to dial it back by 0 0.5, right? Because we don't have any decimals in any of our data. They're all whole numbers. Yeah. So we <clears> could <throat> use 0.5s to separate our intervals. Yeah. Right, so if we take it and we dial it back by 0 0.5, we, we could really start at 16.5, couldn't we? That would be the left endpoint of our first interval. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now, so instead of going, but the thing is, is that, okay, well, how many intervals do we want? Five's the minimum. We've got a range of 12. Well, that's a pretty small range. So we could say, we could say six intervals. Right, it, with an interval width of two. Yeah. Okay, and that creates six intervals. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the best way to go because otherwise we're, we're going to end up with intervals of with a width of three, but then only four of them, right? And that's too few. That's just too few. Okay, so let's create an interval width of two using our range of 12. Okay. Uh, and so our very first endpoint, our left endpoint of our first interval will be 16.5. And just as a reminder, we took that 17, we mm -hmm. added a decimal place of significant figures, we added a decimal point of specificity, and then we back off a half the unit, that way we've included 17 there. We've got an interval width of two, so we'll just go 16.5 to 18.5. Okay, and mm -hmm. then we'll go 18.5 to 20.5. Okay, and then so on and so forth. Yeah. All the way up until we enclose our greatest value. Yeah, so you just keep adding intervals until you get above the highest value, which we noticed was 29. Now we can't stop here. No, because th these are our six intervals, but now it's like, oh yeah, but 
We still need to go one more. So really, even though we planned on having six intervals, with the way we organized our intervals, we're going to get an extra one, but that's okay. Right? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. You can have sort of a okay. roomy last interv interval, right. right? And so, again, the midpoints. Now, you, we can use Excel for this. So, Mr. Jackson, yeah, okay. just press equals. All right, equals. Equals, and then do 16.5, or open the bracket, actually, because we want the numerator to be okay. treated as one thing. So, 16.5 plus 18.5. Mm-hmm. End the bracket and divide by 2. So remember the midpoint is just the average point within your interval, so it's just left end plus right end divided by 2. Oh, okay. Now, since our interval width is 2, why don't you just type equals and then click on that and add 2. Hit enter, and then we can auto-fill that down. So this will be a pretty quick way that we oh, can yeah, find all great. the midpoints, right? Yeah. We know the interval width is 2, we set it that way. Once you find the first midpoint, then you can just Use formulas. Okay. Thank you, formulas. So let's go over, because again, we want to start here with the cumulative frequency when we're using Excel. So let's start with um, our formula for uh, count if. Yeah. And so if we do this, the count if function requires us to enter some range of data, which we're going to do, and then we need to enter some criteria. So by entering this range of data right here, we can say count if here's our range and then we comma we say okay well now we need to enter a criteria if we remember from last lesson criteria is always in quotes, quotes. right so we're gonna do if this is less than um, and the first one we do is 18.5 the right end point of yep. our first interval and then we close this quote off and then we close the brackets now, now we got one little mistake yes. in there before the comma a2 to a17 we need to end the bracket before we before we type the comma. No, I don't think we end the bracket. Oh, okay. I think we have to add our dollar signs. We definitely signs. have to add the dollar signs. Yeah, we, we that's our we need to do these absolute cell references because that was I think that's what we ran into last time. We ran into a problem before. Oh yeah, so now when we and hit so enter. So now if we hit enter, we should say okay, well how many of these things are there? Okay, there's one. All right. So now I can copy this down if I remember correctly from last time. And it all says 1, but that's just because I haven't entered this correctly because now I'd want to change this to 20.5. And just recall that the cumulative frequency is a running total. It now says there are two values that are at or below 20.5 hours. And this now says there are six values that are at or below 22.5 hours. So we keep using the right end point of each interval and make that the greatest value, and we want to know how many are below that value. And when we get to the end, what should we have? Well, when we get to the end, if we have 16 pieces of data, then the final cumulative frequency should come out to be the number 16. We should say there are 16 pieces of data at or below the highest number that you've set for your interval. And there they are. And that's a now, another way to check in. If you'd stopped at 28.5 thinking that would be good mm -hmm. and you got to the end and it was 15, then you'd know that you did miss something, that you might, you made an mm -hmm. error somewhere. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so now that we've got our cumulative frequency, now we need to say, okay, let's come back here and let's do the frequency. And so to do the frequency, we start with one. And what I want to do is, is that... Let's select that cell just in case we decide to make changes later. Yeah, okay. So, so let's we'll do select equals it. and then we'll select Okay, that cell. so equals, here's this. So equals this. G2. So we're saying go to G2 and get that number. All and right. Hit enter. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And then we could say, okay, well now for this one, what, what I want to do is I want to say this one's going to be this, but I want to subtract the previous running total, yeah. which is 1. And so we know that there's one in the first interval and one in the second interval. That makes sense because in the first two intervals, there are two values. We can use the autofill okay. function to run down. And again, if you're feeling a little bit unsure and you want to check, then you can always perform a sum function at the mm -hmm. bottom of this frequency column. And you can say, okay, equals sum, and then let's just see all of these values added up. Should and this come is better give us 16. 16, and it does. Right? So these are just little checks that you can perform along the way. If I want to do a relative frequency, I take this and I divide by this, but I want to enter my dollar signs because when I do the auto sum or when I do the auto fill, um, oops, ah. 
when I do the auto, I, you know, this right here, I want it to be, um, I, I don't want this to move around. I just want this to move around. Let's enter that. I get my relative frequency. And when I fill down right here, this changes here. I can fill down and I get a pretty nice little relative frequency. So our chart's done, isn't it? Our chart's done. And so now mm -hmm. what we can do is we can come back to here and we can say, all right, well, here is what we have just taken care of. So the range for this data was 12. And we found that using this Excel formula. And you can jot this down if you want, because this is handy to have. Yep. It's a nice little reference. And this was the quick way. But if you did want to see what the max was and see what the min was so you can determine your intervals, then you can find the max and min separately using those Excel formulas yeah. and then figure out the range between yeah. them. Now, we, did a, uh, we, we determined a reasonable interval size. We kind of had that discussion. Interval size could be two. And that would give us a number of intervals of, of seven, right? Because we wanted to dial back by 0 0.5. And so, then the frequency table that we produced looked just like this, okay? And so, basically, we had our battery life, so we had our, um, our whole range here. We had our midpoints that we found, the frequencies, the relative frequencies, and the cumulative frequencies. Great. Everything kind of um, lines up with, with what we wanted to do. Now... What we need to do next is we need to create these frequency histograms. So we're going to do a frequency histogram, a relative frequency histogram, and a cumulative frequency polygon. Okay, so let's go back to Excel now and just review how we're going to do this. So let's begin with the frequency histogram. Frequency histogram. And we're going to select this data. And then you're going to go into charts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to select a column graph. And just the simplest one. Simplest one. And now we, we didn't really have this discussion, but we can assume that hours, because it's time, is a continuous yeah. variable. And so rather than leaving the bars separated like this, we will want to decrease the gap width. Instead so of 150%, we want the gap width to be zero so that the bars are continuous. And now this is a histogram. So a <coughs> bar graph a second ago, now it's a histogram. It's a good looking histogram sure too. Sure is. We don't we we like what's going on on the y-axis because it does show the frequency, but mm -hmm. the x-axis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no. those are not our intervals. Yeah, don't like that. Those aren't the intervals. We want to try and grab this. So again, this is formatting stuff, and so when it comes to formatting, your version of Excel may look different than ours. And so what you're gonna to want to do is figure out, okay, how do I grab data from the chart. Here in mine it says um, select. So basically we go in here and we get this great little window that pops up. The x-axis labels, that's what you're looking for. It's the category labels that we're going to grab and we're going to grab. Now we could also grab the midpoint if we want. If wanted. we had a polygon. If we had a polygon we could grab the midpoint too. We're we not will. going to do that. <clears throat> but right, right now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these. We come up here and we go back to our frequency histogram and now our labels, whew, thank goodness, are correct. Okay, so now we need to format this because we need to tell people that A, this is frequency and this is battery life. So again, a communication is a really, really big part of that. So axis titles, let's go the horizontal axis and we're going to put a little title here. And so what are we graphing? Well, we're graphing battery life. Oh, that says batter life. This is battery <laughs> life in hours. hours, okay? We could also, if we really wanted to, we could say battery life um, interval, um, and we could say in hours. Either of those is fine. Now let's add um, an axis here to the vertical, and this is, of course, going to be frequency. Frequency. Okay. Um, it is interesting that we have... Um, the decimals on here, and we could adjust that if we wanted to, because we don't have 0 0.5 of a frequency, no. um, so we could adjust that if we wanted. Um, right now, it's not that important. What's more important is a chart title, and saying this would be um, battery life. Battery life, and be as you really can't be too descriptive in these titles. Battery life um, in an MP3 player. Yeah. In hours. Uh, would be pretty descriptive. If you knew what kind of MP3 player, uh, you know, heavy-duty batteries, like you, you really yeah. almost can't be too descriptive in the title. Yeah, you could almost say, you know, heavy-duty battery life. Um, 
in an MP3 player. And we could you could even leave out the hours in the title. Yeah, you, you uh, can even say in an, MP, in, in, in an MP3 player, you know, or and you, you could you know, as descriptive in, in general with these titles, you know, better to be more descriptive than uh, than than not descriptive enough. Because mm -hmm. battery yeah. life in and of itself, what is it powering? And so it's important to know how long these batteries last, specifically in what we are measuring, which is an MP3 mm -hmm. player. And we can shift all these around. That looks pretty good. Yep. You know, that looks pretty good. Now, we are going to so, do the same thing. This is the frequency histogram. Okay, so let's get rid of this now, okay. and, and let's go, and, and let's actually do the relative frequency histogram. So is it really that it's much exactly different? It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same process. Since it's a relative frequency histogram, we select the data that's okay. in the relative frequency column. We go get our charts. We make a column chart. I set a gap We're with, gap with two. zero. Zero. Okay. Hey, it looks exactly the it's same. Exactly the same. Yeah, it should. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the um, same. But now what I want to do is I want to change here. Our axis has changed. So I want to change this to relative frequency. Again, go and grab the interval, and then my title would reflect that. Yep. My title would reflect that. Okay, so it's basically the same thing. I'm just grabbing a different set of data. What about the polygon? So the cumulative frequency polygon, again, if you want to graph cumulative frequency, select the data under the okay, cumulative frequency. Okay, select it. And then what do and I want? Do I want a line or scatter? We're going to go to line. Okay. Okay, and just select the first one. Okay. Okay. Now this is creating that line for you, connecting all those points but right now the points say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, we don't want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want mm. the midpoints. So in this yeah, case, we're not right. choosing intervals, we're choosing midpoints because we want the midpoint to reflect the fact that these are line segments that are connecting points for each one of these. So we'll go and we'll select the right x-axis labels. Oops, so I gotta move this out of the way first. Oh, oh. you know what? I think it's gonna let, let you select it right underneath. Oh. Where do I stop? No idea. People, we're winging it here. No, we'll have to move it out of the way. Cancel. Free it up. All right. And then we'll go back. There we go. Midpoint. Midpoints. Done. On there. And then there they are. But you can see it. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. We get very excited with statistics here. <laughs> I like my charts and my yeah, graphs. Yeah, I like Mr. my Jackson. charts. All right, so <clears throat> so here it is. This is our frequency. Now, is there any way that I can get the little dots on there? I think if you actually under the line when you select your chart type, if you oh, go to the okay. second one, then I think you can actually yeah. So if I had wanted to the, select the, oh here yeah marked so a line. mark line and that would do the same thing. Yeah. Right now, eh, doesn't really matter. So again, it's just a matter now of going okay format. Uh, let's let's kind of look at the chart layout. We're going to do a title. We're going to do labels on our axes. And there's your cumulative frequency polygon. Yeah, let's go back to the keynote, and we'll just show them how that looks when, when it's, it's all when done. It's when it's, when all, it's all, pretty all pretty and, and up. beautiful. Yep. So there are your frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency histograms and polygons for battery life in an MP3 player. All right, so now the last example here we leave for you as a try this. And the Excel spreadsheet... <coughs> this raw data already typed in is, is on, on the website. Is on the website. So download so don't it. Don't retype all this data. Don't retype this. This is wind speed. <clears throat> Kilometers per hour is the units. And we recorded these hourly, every single hour on a calm, on a very calm weekend. Okay? So this is what you need to do with this data. Prepare, and see we could be we could even be here. Prepare a frequency table. Right? So yep. you want to look at your interval. Range. Range. Left end point. Left end point, right end point. These are all whole numbers, so you should probably be able to use the point 0.5. Um, frequency table. You need relative. You need frequency in general, and then you yep. need cumulative. cumulative. Okay. And then put together the histograms. Do the same histograms for this one that we did for the last one. Yep. So do a frequency histogram, a relative frequency histogram, and do a cumulative frequency polygon. polygon. Yep. Okay. Just for fun. And try those, and when that's done, save it, put it on a data stick, come to class tomorrow, and, and we'll, we'll look have at a look. it. All right, thanks.